Let's build the headlight graphic with NURBS. Using NURBS is a lot easier on top of a subdivisional model because you don't have to worry about the topology in order to create the detail. I've switched to the NURBS workflow just so I have access to my, my normal marking menus and shelf layout. I prefer to work only on one half of the model. So I'm going to select the model and delete half of it. Now when we're looking at just the front end, we can see the back end of the car as well. To make this a little simpler to view and to make sure that we're not in a burnt... Uh. When looking at the front of the model, we can also see the back of the model. I like to use the dynamic section tool to clip or hide the rear of the car. So we'll just turn that on and I'll place it you know, somewhere around the front wheel well. I'm going to turn on persistent visual clip, and that way it remains hidden even when I exit out of the tool. Let's go to the front view and lay a few curves out that will represent our headlight. And we'll just make these very simple. And I'll come down to this area. For the demo, I would give yourself a little bit of room. It will make the presentation a lot easier. And what I mean by that is when we fillet these curves, we want to make sure that we have enough room to get large fillets on, on all of these curves to finish the model. Next, I'll use the Curve Fillet tool. And we'll just select a couple of the curves and we'll switch this to, let's say, 30 millimeters or so. If you want to make adjustments after the fact, make sure to turn the trim type to off instead of automatic, and then you'll be able to make adjustments to the original curves. Let's make this one a little bit smaller just to give room for this fillet. There we go. So that one's a five millimeter radius. So we'll want to make sure that we're smaller than five millimeters for the actual fillet and gap size that we'll use for the headlight graphic. Let's try 20 for this one. Excellent. So now all of the curves have been filled in. Place the curves into a layer. The next step is to select the surfaces, any surface that will need a projection from the curves. I'll go to project, project in X. We'll select our curves. Now that we have them all selected, let's go ahead and project those. This is a curve on surface on top of our subdivision surface. Before I use the panel gap tool to create the part line um, and fill it around the headlight, let's trim divide. And that way we can assign a different material to the headlight from the body side. So I'll just go to my trim tool and divide these. And I want to make sure that I divide this piece as well. This little triangle shape has to be separate from this surface in order for this to work correctly. Same thing here. We'll want to make sure we divide that twice and that once. So now all of the headlight shapes are completely separate. And this section of the body is separate from this portion. The panel gap tool can be found under the rolled edge. And I'll just go to panel gap and open the options. I have chain select turned on, made all of the gap distance and the center radius is pretty small to make sure that this works correctly the first time. Chose the edge, I'll hit accept, then I'm going to choose all of the adjacent surfaces so that the tool can work on both sides of the cut line.
Now that the tool is finished, you can see there is a fillet and a, a nice gap. I can use something like the apply shader under the render menu to create a new material and assign to the headlight. To finish off our model, we'll return to our dynamic section tool and turn off persistent visual clip. And then when we exit the tool, everything will return. Use the mirror tool to create the other side and weld it together.